Retro Station, Super Console X Turbo, X3, Max, The King is Back, Pauki Box. Oh man, there are so many of these freaking things. 2021 was absolutely crazy. But let's make a top 10 and let's see which one is the best. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to do it. Finally, the top 10 retro station game boxes from AliExpress in general. Like I have reviewed so many of these freaking things in 2021. It's like ridiculous. I have never seen so many different products came out in one year. And yeah, I have seen a lot of handhelds, but with the game stations, it's like crazy. In the past, I've reviewed a couple of them, like an X game, an Xbox fake one, a PlayStation one fake one, you name it, like your typical China crap stuff. But they have basically like step up their game and they like doing something completely different. And I mean, they're using basically other kinds of software now. And that makes a difference. Of course, we're going to get our famous Pandora's box in this top 10 and also some other weird things. And yeah, I must say that I was surprised to see how fast they like shitting those things out, but also improving them. Because Super Console is a quite interesting topic because they released like so many versions of them. And I must say they put in some extra effort in it, like making something unique. We have seen some PlayStation 2 fake ones from AliExpress. And for once we can use original controllers. Man, like mind freaking blowing what kind of weird stuff we did seen this year. But then overall, just like if you need to pick from a consumer perspective, there is absolutely no way to dig through this pattern and because there was a lot of shit going on there like there was a lot of crap that they released and you don't want to have and waste your money on so in this case I just want to make special top 10 for you guys so let's start with the number 10 for this year okay guys so for the number 10 I choose the pep 1 and the pep 2 and the reason I'm choosing these products is very simple they are similar the only thing what is different is the shell or the way they made this so the PEP 1 is basically more like this plug and play game system and the PlayStation 2 clone. So the PEP 1 really surprised me. That was my title and it was absolutely true. It was not like for clickbaity. No, it's like I was surprised about this. It came with pretty good controllers, not the best one. It looks kind of weird like an Xbox controller. And yeah, the plug and play solution was kind of weird if you ask me because look at this thing sticking out of your HDMI connection. Makes no sense whatsoever. Okay, so what was also interesting, what makes this thing pretty damn good in my opinion, is the software was running on. It was pretty damn or old school retro arc with Linux. It's kind of weird combination. You couldn't change anything out in the background, but still had a lot of options when it comes to playing some emulators and setting some things up. Quick load, quick save, your typical stuff nowadays, but still the emulation performance was not bad at all. And that was what I was really surprised about, is that we're going to get not a very expensive product that actually works pretty good. But okay, so let's take a close look at the PlayStation 2 knockoff called the PEP 2. So basically it was the same kind of product, only slapped in a different casing. And that's the reason why I basically want to have both products on one number, because they're like basically the same product beside the outside of the looks, how this thing is. But another one I find quite interesting that we can use original controllers, because the Chinese one that came with it are freaking awful. I could do some moves somehow, but it was like pretty damn awful and it was basically like ruining a part of my experience with the system. But when you're looking at, again, like the emulation performance, it was not bad at all and it looked pretty damn amazing on my television. So even this is not maybe like the best product out there, I think this thing deserves a spot in my list for 2021. And the PEP1 or the PEP2, both are like pretty damn cool devices. They're not super expensive. The PEP1, I really love the form factor, like it's so tiny. With an extension cable, it doesn't take up a lot of space. The PlayStation 2 was kind of funny that it was basically a very good knockoff of the original one. And we can use original controllers. So the number 10 position goes to the PEP1 and 2. The family that brings a lot of pieces of retro back in your living room. Yeah, the naughty way. So on the number 9 position, I choose Pandora's Box Game Console. Maybe surprising that I put in this piece of hardware on the number 9 position, but basically they're having like special game system that you can buy. Yeah, and those things are not bad at all, or some of them are not bad. Because as you can see, like there is a freaking jungle out there of these boards. They're selling like game boards, but in this video I just want to particularly having the real game system, game box I've reviewed like back in the day. Because some of these boards, like the Pandora Game 3D, has a lot of potential and even you have some option to modify the software to make it even better. I already mentioned I want to highlight the game systems because they are like pre-built game systems with controllers, very nice casing, it even says like Pandora's box. 
And these versions, that's the reason I wanted to put them in the list. They still have a lot of issues with the original software, depending what kind of model you're buying with screen tearing, stuff like that. But some of them are like, okay. And I mean, okay, you can really enjoy some retro games. Here you can see it comes in a nice casing, nice box, and some okay places to knock off wireless controllers. Have all the functionalities, some even have an on off switch, and we have the option to play together with four players. And with the latest edition like Pandora Box EX, we even go to get a fancy menu. And with the fancy menu, I mean like options to check out if you can change, let's say, controller configurations. And a very fancy thing is that we can even put the quality optimization off. And we have a search function, category system. So they try to improve the software itself. And I mean, especially the menu. And when you're looking at the latest boxes beside the Pandora Game 3, we're now going to get more options when it comes to installing or getting emulators. So it's very locked here and there. I just need to point that out. Like, you cannot really tinker with it. I think that is more of the convenient thing with the Pandora's box. The downside is, if it's crap, you just have crap. And there is no way most of the time fixing it. So there are some downsides and some good sides to these things. But yeah, nowadays with the new Pandora EX and the Pandora Game 3, we have an option to play PlayStation Portable and 64, stuff like that. But take consideration the higher end stuff will run pretty damn crappy because they're like cheap boxes and low powered. But despite the Pandora box has a lot of issues, it still deserves a spot in my top 10. Simply because it's still a pretty cool piece of equipment that you can pick up and just play. You know, like it's a very simple piece of technology. They're like low power box and the boxes, some of them are like dirty cheap nowadays, especially the older ones, old stock, you can get them dirty, dirty cheap. But if something is worth your money, that is something that you need to decide. In the end, it's flawed in many ways, but let's go on and let the next number. Because like I'm always saying, Pandora's box nightmare will never end. And for the number 8, I choose the Super Console X first generation systems. Yeah, and again, it's more like putting different products in one part of the top 10. And the reason is very simple. They are basically like all the same. Yeah, they call them the S905, W or H or X or whatever. But in the end, like when you're looking at the performance, you're going to get most of the time the same stuff, only in slightly different form factor or just a different name. And that's what we're going to get with this Super Console X stuff. And the reason I put them quite high in the list because these things aren't perfect. Like basically they're running on very old chipsets, S905, quad cores, let's keep it simple. But when you're looking at these devices in general, like the performance was quite okay. It runs a lot of games, mainly when you're looking at the 8-bit, 16-bit stuff, PlayStation 1, we can play a lot of stuff on it. But when you're going to look into the higher setting, then we're going to get the issue that we basically cannot play everything. And that's what I think is a little bit of a bummer when it comes to the Super Console X first generation. But don't get me wrong, like these things are quite interesting. Another downside is this, these things were getting really hot. And they released some weird turbo edition with a gigantic aluminum fan on it. It's like makes no sense whatsoever. But yeah, it was a little bit cooler because they made some errors in the fan itself. But yeah, Super Console X, what is basically Super Console X if you don't know what it is actually? So this is just an emulalic piece of software you can freely download and can basically put on an Android box yourself. The only thing they did is like putting it in a special casing and named it Super Console X. And don't forget, of course, the all famous wireless PlayStation 2 chemical controller. But these were not like the worst quality that you can get because I have seen my share of shitty PlayStation 2 controllers. But this one doesn't feel bad. But depending on what kind of version you're buying, and I mean like the form factor and also the size of the SD card, like you could add a lot of stuff to it. And that also includes old school stuff like MSX2. And what I like about it, that it has so much potential, even for an old school Android box. So they did reuse or recycle a lot of old crap nobody ever used. But up to PlayStation 1, we're having a very good performance. But especially when you're looking at the more demanding games, there we're going to get some issues. Think about N64, that's always like being a problem emulating on a cheap box like this. And yep, the Super Console X first generation had just a lot of issue with that. And also includes PlayStation Portable. There were some games that were playable, but still had a lot of glitches. But that's the things that we're going to get with cheap boxes. So because the market has been flooded with these Super Console X boxes, 
We have so many different versions to choose from. Some are like dirty cheap, some are a little bit more expensive. Again, depending what kind of model you're buying. But that's the reason I just want to put it on this number, simply because it's not perfect from far. And for the number seven, I choose the Super Console X version two. Yeah, it still runs on Amialic 3.9 and yep, it's still the same old Android crap. And the reason I'm saying Android crap because it's running on Android 4. So the Android functionality was absolutely like garbage. You couldn't really use it, but the casing, it was an upgrade over basically the first edition. And I was quite surprised to see in the same year they released the Super Console X, they also released an upgraded edition. Both versions can still be bought when making this top 10. And the casing, it looks amazing. So far I know there are three different versions out there. And I mean like for the colors. Like the translucent, like a white ice version and more like a black edition. Pretty damn awesome. But how about the software? So sadly, because it's still running on the old same crap. Yep, the chipset was the S905X if I'm saying it correctly. So when you're looking at the previous model, it was not a big boost. So what you can play is basically the same stuff. So when you're looking at Sega Dreamcast, there were some games that were just playable. So take consideration, it's not like all that bad. It would be so cool if they made like a better edition. And I mean like maybe overclock it because we have now better cooling. They didn't, but you can still play some old school games. And But we have some issues with N64 like with the previous model. But don't get me wrong, if you just want to play some Diddy Kong farting, you can just play that. It will be on native resolution, so you cannot really upscale it that you have seen with different boxes on the channel. I still needed to put this in the top 10 because they made the case better. Silent fan with nice RGB light up. If you don't like the RGB, you cannot shut it down, so there's a little bit of a bummer. But then, nice casing, better cooling, still the same crap, but doesn't matter, it's better, so it's going to be in a higher number. Okay guys, so for the number six, I'm putting again two products. Uh, you would say like, why two different products? No, they're exactly the same, in my opinion. So what you're going to get is the first one, the Retro Station 14K. So this is based on the S905 X3 chip. That means it's a newer chip, it has more power. So we're also going to get better performance and we're also going to get better Android versions. But what's the other one? That is quite simple. The Super Console X family did release a different edition called the Super Console X Max Edition. And the reason why is quite simple. Because both of the boxes are sharing the same chipset. And yep, maybe the other one has a different kind of looking menu. The other one maybe looks different when it comes to the case. But in the end, it runs on Alec and it runs on Android 9. So it's basically the same stuff. But especially when you're looking at the performance wise, in my opinion, you're just going to get the same thing. And that's why these boxes, like there are some different names, but in the end, they are an Android box with Amialic and you just do the same thing when it comes to the performance of the emulation. But how about the emulation performance? So games like Atomus Wave, where we had a lot of issues, they run way better now. But when you're looking at the PlayStation Portable, they were still going to get the same kind of issues because we still not have enough power to run most three-dimensional games. The two-dimensional games will run just fine. But games like Dead Alive 2 on Sega Dreamcast, still I don't find the speed fast enough. Um, no, it's not perfect, but it is slightly better. But then overall, when you're looking at the performance, still the S905 and now with the S905 X3, it's a step up, but it's not like a huge one. And you will see it when you're looking at more demanding emulators. But okay guys, so when you're looking at performance, it's okay, it's a minor step up. So both boxes are better, so they will get a higher ranking in this top 10. But take consideration, they are still having some problems, especially when it comes to really demanding emulators. These systems are just not powerful enough to run Sega Saturn, stuff like that. But let's go to the next number. For the number 5, I choose the Raspberry Pi 4. It's, for me, a game box system. Yep, the Raspberry Pi can do so many crazy things if you look it up. But I just want to point out like this is absolutely an amazing piece of technology if you want to use it for retro emulation slash gaming. And the reason why is just this thing has so much potential when it comes to let's say gaming. Of course you pay a slightly more money when you're looking at some cheap boxes from AliExpress. But this device can basically run a lot of stuff that other devices can't. Especially when you're looking at the beginning of this list. I mean Sega Saturn, Dreamcast. System that we want to emulate on cheap boxes, it's absolutely impossible or we're going to get a mix of performance. And the Raspberry Pi 4, 
has such a big community behind it and depending of course what kind of software and emulators you're running but in the end it has so much cool things to offer and again like with the emmy alex software we can play also a lot of old school games the only downside to this is you need to have some knowledge with the raspberry pi that's something you need to take consideration but the positive thing is you can do a lot of tweaking if you want to Nowadays they're just sticking a Pi inside a freaking arcade machine because the emulation performance is quite good for main but also for the more demanding games like Sega Dreamcast that are live too. And like I shown you before, like Dreamcast is like still a very good platform to emulate but I noticed like a lot of games didn't run very well on cheap Android boxes. Depending of course what kind of emulator because I think the Redream emulator has been ported to the Raspberry Pi 4 and get a really good performance on a single board like that. But overall like Atomos Wave runs very good and so many other systems do. So I was surprised to see that Raspberry Pi is so well supported by many emulators. The promise I have seen with the cheap boxes higher up in this list don't have the same issues with the Raspberry Pi 4. So that is why I'm putting the Raspberry Pi 4 in my list for 2021 like great machines to play and emulate some systems or basically retro game station, game box, doesn't matter really how you want to call it, you can do a lot of great things with the Raspberry Pi number 4. But let me know in the comments what do you think of the Pi and do you own one and let's go to the next number because we need to keep the show on the road. Okay guys, for the number 4, I have chosen the Super Console X X3 Max Plus. So yeah, it's a mouthful, but they are keep making these weird names. In the end, what you're going to get is basically like the Retro Station, yep, the Retro Station 14K and the Super Console X Max, if you can still follow me. This is the S905 X3, and what they are doing, giving it the nice fancy casing. This time I got the different color, and the reason I put it in a higher ranking is simple. We're going to get basically the same performance like the previous one, but we're going to get way better cooling. And with the new Amiya Alec 4.3 support, we're going to get Sega Saturn and the Sega Saturn runs okay. And yeah, you can hear it from my voice. It's okay because it is not perfect, but that doesn't spoil the fun. I have been messing and playing around with it. And I must say the performance was not bad in general, and I could play a lot of games. Yeah, take consideration, these are still old specs Android boxes and you can well see this very often back in the emulation performance because some of the systems, like it's quite interesting to see that we can actually play Sega Saturn on a cheap X3 box. And yeah, even they have saying have better cooling, so far I know there is no overclocking. It's a little bit of a bummer and again a missed opportunity if you're having so much better cooling you can better better slap and better chip in it or overclock it crazy so we're going to get better performance so i still wanted to put it in the list itself and the reason is very simple it is in my opinion way better to work with emmy alec it's user friendly and there are still some things you need to learn but it is not like that extreme like with the raspberry pi and the support and the cooling is way better now with the software and Therefore, I want to give it a little bit higher place in my top 10 for 2021. All right, so for the number three, I choose the PlayStation TV. And this is a quite interesting product. I did, recently did a video about it and the PlayStation TV, I didn't even cut my radar like recently because I was more thinking, hey, we can do so many cool things on a PlayStation Vita. But basically, the PlayStation TV is a PlayStation Vita inside a game console. So you can even install some naughty software and do a lot of great things with it. So, and the reason why this is a little bit higher than all the other products, because this thing can play up to PlayStation 1 without any problems in combination with RetroArch. And we have the option for PlayStation Portable and PlayStation Vita games. Yeah, and PlayStation Vita games, I did read in my main review some mixed opinions, but I think it's pretty damn awesome, even if they are like upscale to a big television. So this PlayStation TV has so much more to offer when you look like the cheap boxes from AliExpress. And the PlayStation TV, I don't know how the price will be, but back in the day, they were like throwing them in like the bins of like for sale because nobody cared about it. Of course, now it's different. But yeah, if you still want to pick one up, sometimes you can find them very cheap. But when you compare them with the PlayStation Vita, it's like amazing. You can play so many cool games and you have a lot of retro games you can emulate and this all slept in this tiny crazy box. It's a little bit of a bummer that again nowadays they will get 
not really cheap anymore because everybody wants to buy one or a lot of people want to have one for the collection to play Vita games or just like the modifying with knowledge software and like add yourself some old school retro games. And something that we don't need to forget is that the PlayStation TV also have the possibility to play some awesome indie games. I'm a big fan of indie games and for me this is like a great opportunity to have like this box that also plays retro games up to PlayStation Vita and have the option to play some indie games. I think it's freaking awesome. There are two things you need to consider. The first thing is like you need to get yourself like a little bit of knowledge how you need to soft mod this thing. And the other thing is the prices will go up in the future. I know for sure. But okay, so still beside those things, I just want to put it on number three because I think the PlayStation TV has a lot to offer in 2021. All right, next up, the Super Console X King or better known like the GT King. So this is the power device, like the most powerful Android box you can get from AliExpress. And yeah, everything comes with the price and that also includes this thing. So take consideration, it's just an Android box they grab from the shelf, slap Amialic on and they sell it like Super Console X. So basically if you're going to get this box separately and you're going to get yourself an Amialic image that you can download for free, and get yourself some normal controllers, you're going to get like a really cool piece of technology. So the GT King, sadly, like after a year, it's still really powerful and nothing have beaten the King of AliExpress Android boxes. So let's take a close look at the specs. Here you can see like this, the S922X, it's an hexa-core, comes with a Mali G52 MP4. Uh, nevertheless, this thing is quite powerful and has a lot to offer when it comes to emulation. So let's talk about that first. But okay, so what can this device play? It's very simple. So where we had like the cheap boxes, the S905, the S905 X3, we could play like 8-bit, 6-bit stuff. We can do the same thing with the King. To my opinion, you don't need to even buy the King for stuff like that. Particularly where it's going to be shining is where the other ones had problems. Wiper Pure, don't get me wrong, like in God of War will still not run perfectly because it's so unheavy game to play on a freaking Android box. But the Wipeout Pure was a great example, it was not even playable on most of these cheap boxes, but we can play them on the King. Another thing that runs pretty damn good is of course Dreamcast, and when you're going to combine it with Red Dream, we can have a lot of performance even on higher resolutions. So the GT King is the king of Android boxes from AliExpress, and when you're looking at the performance, you can see that too. But one thing you need to take consideration when you're going to look into Yabba Sensiro, that's a Sega Saturn emulator, it's going to get like a little bit struggling simply because this is such a demanding system. And But still we're going to get better performance than all the other ones that we have seen before. But don't get me wrong, a lot of games are playable now and that we couldn't do with the previous boxes like the Super Consolix Max Pro and stuff like that. We couldn't even play Sega Saturn decently, especially the three-dimensional games. When you're looking at the N64, it's always like a very hard platform to emulate on an Android box. But the King itself, I must say, I was surprised to see that the Cruising USA and a lot of games that had issues with this boxes, that it still runs decent enough to enjoy. I did notice some minor hiccups when later on in the game, but the general performance is quite good, if you ask me. But I just need to put this device under number two because it still comes with an okay price. It will have some pros and cons, but still I think it's the most powerful Android box you can buy from AliExpress. Because if you're looking at an Nvidia Shield, it is almost twice the price. For the number one position, I choose not the Retro Station PC. But I just wanted to show you this. So they're selling the Retro Station PC, but also the Super Console X PC Lite Edition. It's basically like a mini PC that runs on Balasera. And for the people who have no idea what's going on here, like Balasera is more like a Linux operating system that does the same thing like ME Alec. You can play retro games, but this device has more power than all the other ones we have seen before. Especially when you're looking at the emulation, then we're going to get some interesting things. So the rest of the station PC runs on the J4125, comes with 8GB memory, some have 4GB. That doesn't really matter. So the reason it doesn't matter is very simple. We're going to talk about this mini PC. Yeah, my friends, this mini PC is basically almost the same one they are selling with the Super Console X or the Retro Station Packs. Only this one costs around $125 up to $150. Don't pay me exactly on the price. This is what I paid for it. Maybe the price go up and down. You never know. 
But why is this thing so much better? So when you're looking at the GT King on number two or with the NVIDIA Shield, I didn't even include it this time simply because I didn't find it on really liking game box. And again, like this thing is around 250 up to 300 euro, way too much. And the GT King still comes with an okay, decent price and performance. And of course, Emu Alec is only supported on the GT King. But where we're going to talk about this mini PC is because this thing is basically between those. It still comes with quite a good performance. We have Badashira and we can emulate stuff that we couldn't emulate before. And this thing has the best performance for Sega Saturn. Basically, we're looking at all the other boxes and of course the other systems like Sega Dreamcast, you name it. It runs way better and PlayStation Portable. But the reason why this thing is so cheap is because it's like an older model. And that is what I love about the technology that it's getting older, it's going to get cheaper. So basically the value that you're going to get for the money you're paying, in my opinion, is ridiculous good. And that's the reason I just want to put it on the number one for 2021. Take consideration, it's the same box from the outside only with some older ships in the inside. And the other thing you need to take consideration, if you're going to buy this PC separately, you need to get yourself a hard drive or a bottle share image at least. Then you need to get yourself like a controller, maybe you have a, like an Xbox 361 laying around that I have. And then you slap it together and you have like this cheap to the cheap cheap solution. It comes here with two HDMI ports, uh, audio out, stuff like that. It has way enough like USB ports, so if you want to play with a couple of controllers, of course you can always use the option to get yourself like a USB hub. And not to forget, it comes with a USB 3.0 port, and that's very handy if you just want to use an external drive with a Bottle Zero image. But they also have the option for a 2.5 inch drive to put in the machine itself, so that is super convenient, so you just have this tiny box that contains everything. You just plug in a hard drive, you of course, don't forget you put a Bonus Zero image on it. You configure to boot it up always with the Bodasera and you have yourself like a beast of a cheap device. But I have never seen so many different platforms on one single piece of hardware and software. And that is what I think really convenient with Bodasera in combination with a pretty okay or fast PC. In this case with this mini PC you can play so much more than with an Android box and MU Alec. And it brings it to the next level. But so many people in the last couple of years asked me if a certain game were running, for example, a Killer Instinct. And no, it didn't run on cheap Android boxes, but it does run on this mini PC. And that makes it quite interesting. You're not paying a lot of money for this piece of hardware. And when you're going to configure everything, you're going to get yourself like an amazing technology in your home that can play a lot of old school arcade games. Stuff that you have never seen on an Emil Alec. Okay, but when you're looking at a Sega Saturn, still we're going to get some minor issues with the audio, but the overall performance is slightly better than the Android box that I've shown before. But if you think about it, you're paying like maybe a couple of dollars more for this mini PC and you're still going to get better performance. PlayStation Portable runs very good. And I can say like, you can even maybe upscale it with some games to get even like better resolutions. And that's something that you're going to get with a mini PC like this, even that it's cheap. And I found it quite fascinating to see that we're not paying a lot of money for it and we're still going to get better performance than an Android box. Of course, the unit is slightly bigger, but in my opinion, it gets better cooled. We can put in a 2.5 inch drive, so we're having somewhere more and better options. Okay, but if you're going to look into the PlayStation 2 and GameCube, there we're going to see the limitation. But yeah, we couldn't even play those systems or even boot it up with a cheap Android box. So it's present, some games will run, some will run a little bit slowly, but that's why we're going to find the limitations of this mini PC. Again, I find it quite fascinating to see that we can even boot it up and that we actually like play some games. But okay guys, so for the number one I wanted to choose this mini PC because you're not going to pay a lot of money for it and you're going to get a lot of value basically for your money. Take consideration if you're going to buy yourself a kit like a super console or a retro station, you just pay more money because it's already like comes with some controllers and some hard drives. The cheaper way is to do it yourself, but it's something you need to consider. And yeah, it's all up to you. But still, in my opinion, this is my number one for 2021. All right guys, so Absolutely, 2021 was the year of the game boxes. Absolutely crazy how many of these things they like shit it out. But the thing is like, it's such a pain in the ass to make a product list. Like I, it took me weeks 
to make this top 10 actually you like to find the right one for the certain number if you don't agree on something let me know in the comments i really love to know what is your favorite book which one do you use what kind of way do you like do you like emmy alec do you like bodashira let me know in the comments what well, i thank you for watching if you're new consider subscribing hit that little bell become one of the wicked family and it would be just great to see you in the next video